Hi, I'm George Poppy, and this is Digging In, a show where I make someone dinner and we talk about things. This week's guest is Tim from Acapella Science, and just like an interesting guy. So let's dig in. It's, it's, like, I find it interesting people who still go to film school, and I have so much respect. Mm. But at the so you never went to film school? No, I didn't. Mm. Um, I'm right now. That is a little too low. Oh, mm. That that awkward moment <laughs> where I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, this would have been a good entry. To I the know. Damn it! I, I screw myself over. <laughs> One of the rules of eating when you're on a show, which is to not eat such a big bite that you can't respond to the conversation. It's okay. It's one of those things you have to keep on just talking when, when you see someone having yeah. that issue. Mm -hmm. So I'm helping you out right now. I'm trying at least. Uh, and I'm just gonna drone on a little bit. Ooh. But yeah. We used to do that on the podcast when like someone would have a coughing fit or like really need to like take a drink of water or sometimes mm -hmm. just like someone's gonna go to the bathroom and they're like I'm gonna go to the bathroom just yeah walk for three or four minutes but if you think about it you then learn conversational skills so well probably through that podcast mm -hmm. um, but the, the yeah. advantage of a podcast that you're not filming is that then yeah no one needs to know if you're really good at monologuing well to be fair with this setup that I have no one would need to know that's true what's going on that's the beauty of the three cameras ah oh, yeah. yeah you wouldn't even need to show me ever no it could just be the George show with a guest ghost. You could. This could be a conversation that you had with like an entirely different person, and then you just subbed me in to do like scripted responses because you really hated that person and didn't like the conversation. It's possible. Everything is fake. Life is an illusion. Is this fake news? Are we getting to that level of absurdity right now? Do you want to go there? You I don't talk about fake news. I don't. No. I'm like I love it and I hate it. I I don't know. I watch the Daily Show all the time, so I'm like almost sick of it. But I can't stop watching. I don't know how I feel anymore. Well, do you have like an ideal future? Like if you're, if you're the overlord, like planning the future. I don't. What are you I wouldn't for? want that oh. kind of power. To be very honest, I think that's that's good. It's a good instinct. Yeah, it's because I feel like it's the same way. Like, hey, would you not want to die? Hmm. You, I feel like you're just playing with fire, and then you're not going to be satisfied ever. It's like you've manipulated everything. Then there's just no free, free will. There's like. You just kind of not, set everything into motion. You mean it, like the the being being God playing with the future yeah. thing? Okay, but like, I'm not saying you can do it, but like, if you have oh mm -hmm. broad strokes, what is like? Do you have an ideal future? I don't think so. Hmm. It's because I also like the uncertainty. That's hmm. what's fun about life. It's okay. not knowing. Because if I knew exactly what I was going to do the rest of my life, it's just like why even bother? In I think a way. That's a, I think it's a particular personality type, and actually, I it think that's, I think it's like a creator personality type. Well, what like there's, I'm, I'm there's guessing this, uh, there's this uh, personality model called the five factor model, and mm -hmm. one of the factors is openness, right? Openness to experience. Mm -hmm. It's something that like creative creative people generally are like off the charts on this this one trait. Yeah. Um, but it's characterized by like hate, pretty much hating boxes, right? And wanting <laughs> wanting everything to be like oh, free and exploratory all yeah. the time, right? And so it also correlates pretty well with like with like political liberalism as opposed mm -hmm. to conservatism. So we just want to try out everything and see what we can do, right? Uh, see so. what can happen. Just like let's try everything before the cameras were rolling. How oh. you didn't know anything really when you started making videos and <clears throat> well, I mean, I wouldn't say I didn't know anything. I would say I didn't know anything about making videos. Okay. Like videos were the yeah. videos were the piece that I was missing in making YouTube videos, weirdly enough. So like the yeah. like this this acapella science project, right? Mm -hmm. Like the seeds of both the acapella and science parts of that yeah. are from like when I was three years old. That's awesome. Yeah. Like yeah, I sang in my mom's church choir mm -hmm. in Hudson when I was three and I Watched Bill Nye the Science Guy when I was three as oh, well, right? Man, Bill Nye. Yeah, and like just there, like even at the end. Did you watch Bill Nye? Yes, I love Bill Nye. I was gonna say, did you see the new show? I haven't. I would hold off on it. Yeah, that's what people have told me. I know, but Bill, Nye, but like yeah. Bill Nye was my idol, and like at the end right, of every so. episode of his was basically what I do, right? It was these mm -hmm. these like song parodies. <clears throat> but the yeah, so the only thing that I didn't really have by the time I was doing these science degrees, and also I had been in like acapella groups and yeah. stuff was actually how to make videos. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like, you're not, when you've already done two physics degrees, you're not really gonna go to film school after that, you know? Like one of the reasons I guess that I went into physics was I wanted to get a university degree in something, but yeah. more of it was just curiosity. It was mm -hmm. like... It's a good reason to <clears throat> do physics. Yeah, like I, I don't know, I'm pretty, 
blessed, I guess, to have two parents who had like really weird tracks through life. So my dad was like almost a Jesuit priest and then decided not to be, but he got wow. like this philosophy degree in Brazil because he was a missionary there and that That's wasn't amazing. valid when he came back. So then he just like worked in factories and eventually got like a sales job. Damn. And my mom got a philosophy degree and then she decided to be a teacher and then she decided to stay home and like teach us. And it was like, wow. So they've got these, like they're very intellectual people, but mm -hmm. they've ne never took like an official career track, right? So they're like, do education. It'll be great. Our education was great for us, but also we didn't really use it for a job. Like that's not what it was for. It was for like uh, broadening yeah. your ability to do anything in the world. But I, yeah, so yeah. I, at the end of the first physics degree, you were asking why I did two physics degrees. Yeah, why? I just, I wasn't done. They, they plop you in like the 1930s. They're like, they get you all the way up to like, yeah. here's how an atom's made and then stop. And you're like, well, what, what's inside the, what about these little things that are inside the yeah. atom? What are they yeah. made of? And you're like, gotta do more. Gotta do more physics if you want to find out. Wow, that sounds like a crack dealer. Mm, maybe a little bit. And maybe for the people who really get addicted to the crack, they become physics professors and that's, they have a happy life being an addict. Because there are worse things you could be addicted to, but there are. I, after two degrees, I had enough. Mm -hmm. That's I fair. got to the the level of we're not telling you about the world anymore. We're hypothesizing about crazy things that are probably wrong, and we know they're probably wrong, but we don't have any better ideas. Mm. And I got more interested in well, what else don't I know, right? That's an interesting space to then jump off with acapella science. Yeah. Um, so that's the, yeah. Like, so the first two like. Three or four videos, I guess, were kind of exploring what I'd learned in mm -hmm. in science, right? Yep. You know, like quantum field theory and string theory and this kind of stuff. And then I had to move out of that because I just wasn't an expert in, in enough things. Yep. I had to become an expert in random things and keep making videos, which is really rewarding, actually. I, like, I honestly always thought when I was growing up that I was just like, oh yeah, I'm just going to be in school forever. I thought I was going to be a philosophy professor and just like sit down in okay. my ivory tower and think <clears> up things. <throat> And then realized, wait, if I do that, I ne never will talk to anyone because it's lonely. Ph philosophy professors don't don't they philosophize in in groups? Like, is, isn't there an equivalent of like, the, uh, what was that thing in Athens where all the philosophers? Oh would, like, yeah, gather um, and the agora. Speak? Yeah. Um, they try, but Lect it's also like you're only halls. <laughs> yeah, you only talk to other professors. Mm. Um, and I, 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 I part of why I was. So interesting. I was like, I want to like, I see philosophy is still so important to day to day life, mm. and like, why aren't we questioning philosophical things like more carefully? Do you have like a yeah. like a or several philosophical questions that like you're really <sighs> driving at? I don't know. Okay. Maybe that's the fact. I'm just like lost at this point in my life, and I'm just like, what's the meaning? Woo! I know. What is the meaning Woo! of life? Like, mm -hmm. I grew up very religious. Yeah. Um, Obviously, with your dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And my my mom is perhaps more religious than my dad at this point. Mm -hmm. I I should probably ask them about that specifically. Yeah. But she's definitely like the the driving force. Mm -hmm. And I I had to I had to sort of explore the most intense version of that to sort it out because there's a lot of claims like in Christianity that are really like, you will not know whether this works unless you try it, right? Like, yeah, there's a lot of blind faith. Yeah. Which but I can't do as an atheist, like, I've just ex like been like, I don't well, get this, so. <clears throat> well, the funny thing can't. is that very few Christians actually try it, right? Yeah. Like someone asked me recently on Twitter, they, they were like, do you think that faith and science can, you know, should talk to each other or are they like separate magisteria yeah. or whatever? And I was like, no, they totally should. Like if you have a faith, It'll mm. make predictions, yep. right? So go test out those predictions, like, and maybe they, you know, they might not be predictions that you can make, that, that you can just go and look up a scientific study and yep. find the answer. They might be predictions where you're gonna have to like live your life in a certain way for a while, and you're gonna have to see does like does the do the things that this faith told me are going to happen happen in yep. my life, right? So I had to actually try that out. And I did, and it didn't really, it, I mean, as these things often do, mm -hmm. it doesn't really go the way, the way that the faith says it will, right? If there's, yeah. there's a lot in, in Christianity about, like, step, yeah, like, like, do these crazy things, right? Like, don't worry about tomorrow, yeah. because the Lord will grant you things for tomorrow. And no one takes that seriously, right? Mm -hmm. But because they don't say, take it seriously, a lot of religious people, in my experience, um, end up in a place where they think like they think of themselves as bad faithful 
Mm -hmm. but they stay in a place where they can remain faithful because they haven't done the test, right? Yeah. Um, so I decided I'm going to try to think of myself as good faithful and do the test, and then mm -hmm. you, you go way out on the one side and you find out whether it fails, and then if it does fail, you try some, something that's different. That's interesting. But yeah. So that's what I, what I was coming to with that is that you were, we were talking about meaning. So the thing is that I grew up with this very deep sense that everything was meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. The like, the you know the purpose of the world was all oriented towards you know this one like yeah. you know cosmic plan where eventually everything will be renewed and new heaven and new earth and yeah. bliss for for all eternity. Right? Sounds lovely. <laughs> it does, yeah. and it's it's interesting to like come out of that and have to reformulate like well what is first of all what does meaning mean when it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that. And number two, what did people mean by meaning when they came up with these religions, right? Like, why was it so important to people to have a transcendent purpose? Because it couldn't have been that the religion came first, right? Yeah. If you, like, like what's, yeah, what's the mechanism by which people decided there must be some ultimate purpose for everything? And then they went about constructing religions. I think the major stepping point, is like an organized religion that kind of helped everyone have a society that kind of stuck together and clung mm -hmm. before the nation state type of idea. Um, and I think it's sad sometimes to say like everyone let go of it and then like now we have less of a community because of it. Um, right. Because I, like, as an atheist, I grew up as an atheist, I can see my friends who like went to church every single Sunday and they have a strong community. I'm like, that's really lovely and to a certain extent. Do I think the like religion teaches, I think, a lot of good values? And when I look back at like, like the usual like Ten Commandments, I'm like, I live my life by those commandments anyways because it's just like being a good human. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, like a lot of those are, yeah. they're, they're innate in the people. But the community is, yeah, I have actually found it pretty hard to replace. Yeah, because like it's, when else do you just like basically set a time every single week that you're going to see these people? I've been finding in trying to replace that community, like I'm still part of a lot of religious communities of kind of on the sidelines. Because you never but, leave in yeah. the sorry sense. But you have to be a little bit on the sidelines, right? It's yeah. like, the thing that binds us together is our faith. And it's like, well, I'll, I'll yeah. be over here. Um, I love you guys, but yeah, just can't join. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to, to do things by yourself. And it's hard to get out of, it's hard to get away from zero. Like, yeah. if you don't have any routines that are based around, like, or any motivations to do something that are based around other people, and you don't have any other people, then you don't have any people to give you those routines and you don't yeah. have any routines to get you to actually remember to see that person and not ignore them for the next three years. And it can very quickly just become this loop of like, I am alone, doing nothing, and now the world is sad. Yeah, it's... Yeah. I, I honestly do struggle uh, with that all the time where mm. I am like, okay, how do I get inspired? Because I know my inspiration it's weird. I like. I look back now. I'm like. I am an original person. I can make content that is original, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like that ever in my mind because I see where I drew inspiration from every single bit of content that I've yeah, consumed before. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, to create, I like. I, I look at a blank page and I'm like, this is the most terrifying thing because I don't know where to start. I need a. It's weird. Yeah. Well, I the, hate blank, the blank page is the worst pa like oh, plain thing to get inspiration from, right? It's literally nothing. It's like, oh great. Like the global fame. There's a level of it that definitely sounds like it would just be upsetting. Yeah. I, like you don't have any privacy. Yeah. Like, you don't. You're not. You're always performing for someone. Like there's yeah. so many stories of performers. Like, I think Kevin Hart once, hmm. like, was just trying to have a nice quiet time with his family, and then people came in and like, hey, can I get an autograph? And you know what the thing is? His job is to give that person an autograph because they pay him. Yeah. By being so visible, you you are getting money and everything you, from life because you give people your time. And then when he said no, everyone got offended and like, mm. it, it's sad. Yeah, it's expected from you by the society. Yeah. It's like this is the trade-off. You get global fame and riches and whatever else, yeah, you but get, you you sort of you have to give your life to it. I know, and yeah, that that's a terrifying concept. It I, is. I don't know how you and feel watch about out it. because probably you don't get to control just how successful you become. I mean, everybody worries about, like, will I ever make it? If you do make it, you probably don't really control at what level you make it. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's probably... The thing is that I don't know if it's worth worrying about because it so rarely happens, but it's also true that 
if everybody worried about it, then the people who made it would have already considered the possibility and they'd probably be a lot yeah. more they well adjusted. Or they'd like a Jim Carrey type who completely withdrew into himself. I was talking to someone about <coughs> playing roles in daily life because I've, I've been doing my best to like strip away whatever roles I play. Mm -hmm. Like I've been, I've been realizing <coughs> And this has got me into like some interpersonal trouble with people, honestly, that like there are, there are a lot of these like personas that you put on in different situations. Oh, yeah. Um, and particularly if you're kind of a more agreeable type person, you can often start to feel really trapped in, in those personas, right? Like, oh, yeah. Like you're, you're more worried about, what, about another person's well-being than your own, but then because you spend so much time worried about them instead of you, you become resentful of yep. that of that person in that relationship right mm -hmm. so then i've been i've been sort of trying to strip away that because i've realized that eventually if you do that um it, it doesn't work out like you can't sustain it you just collapse and yep. then it, and then everything collapses and it's mm -hmm. kind of catastrophic right it's, whereas if, at, at the beginning if you stand up for yourself and like put yourself on equal footing with a person then they might leave but that's fine and then if if you both if you're both there you can kind of build something. Yeah, it's. I think this first version is like a supernova hmm. type of explosion yeah. where it's there's like so much energy and like especially if you're the person that keeps on agreeing, like you're just constantly feeding that energy and energy mm -hmm. until it basically just a giant explosion. Yeah. Versus you know if you're up front, it's just smaller sun, and if like maybe it's gonna yeah. last a long time, maybe it just fizzles out, and that's okay. Yeah, and you the problem is if you're trying to make that transition, then and you have a lot of those relationships currently then mm -hmm. probably you're gonna lose some of yep. them right mm -hmm. because that's like that you're, you're sort of becoming a different person to that person and it's kind of acknowledgement but like hey i was kind of like lying to you about who i was for like the entire time that yeah. we've known each other which is sucky for anything right but, but it's yeah. also becoming like the acknowledgement that you were being kind of false about it allows you to become a true version of yourself mm -hmm. What do you think about like the idea that there are, there are some things that are just like intrinsically meaningful? Like, I mean, not, not intrinsically yeah. in terms of like transcendently, but intrinsically in terms of like your experience of them. Like mm -hmm. I can take a bite of this steak and I cannot deny that I enjoy it. Right? I no, no matter how much I analyze it, it's just like there. Yeah, it, like, for me, I think about it, it's just signal impulse, like impulses. And we can also teach ourselves different responses to different stimulus. So I think Pavlov's dog, you know, <coughs> if you ring a bell for a dog that just a normal dog, he's not going to do anything. But if you've trained him to always associate the bell with getting food, he's going to immediately start to salivate. And then it's like the food that we taste, our bodies know what we enjoy, but it's also cultural. Because mm -hmm. think about the, like, the people that love <coughs> spicy food, like it's probably because like their culture is like something that has always had spicy food. Mm -hmm. um, it's just train. Pavlovian behavior. You think? Like, no way. I feel like there has to be a, a the, the thing with Pavlov, like, like yeah. so Pavlov is like, he, he makes it, he doesn't feed his dogs for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then he rings a bell and he gives them food. And after yeah. a while, <coughs> he rings the bell and the dogs salivate. That's the experiment. Yeah. So the bell has become meaningful to the dog. Mm -hmm. But the bell was only meaningful to the dog because the food was already meaningful to the dog. Like it's, yeah, I it's think piggybacking on, on a the deeper motivation. Yeah. I think, and so then, the, there has yeah. to like there has to be an end for, an end to that. You can't just go down and down well, and down. Yeah, it's with that. That's a fair point to make. I, I will give you that. Okay. Um, I think it's it goes back to like the basics of just survival instinct. Like that's mm. like the most <coughs> pleasurable. Or we can even go to the pyramid of um, the hierarchy. The of hierarchy needs. of needs. Thank you. Um, and we just always try like once you have your basic needs met, then you like go continuing this on until self-improvement and self-actualization. So right. maybe that's it, and that's what we enjoy intrinsically, but I don't know, it's, but then there's like different tastes to always account for. Like I'm thinking music mm. is something that like billions and billions of people enjoy, but people enjoy different kinds of music at the same time. So yeah, that's true. There's, there's something unified in that, but it's also we experience our taste because of different stimulus. So. Again, yeah. and it's so food. There's, there's something that we all recognize as this yeah. as music, but we don't agree on mm -hmm. any given thing that yeah. that's the music that we like. You were talking about how everyone was telling you, hey, you need to do daily vlogs because that 
creates more engagement and yeah. everyone follows it and it's more content. So all that stuff. And then I think you tried it for a while. Or I, I did some. You dabbled and then. I did a little bit of like back. Q&A stuff and I'm still trying to figure out a way to do it so that I enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. Because I do think it's really valuable. And I think that people really do appreciate it. And honestly, yeah. like, I feel very isolated. So I would like to be able to do something that's more interactive where mm -hmm. I can actually like connect with my audience. So I'm still like working out the process of that. But yeah, definitely if you, if you try to follow the formula for success on YouTube, yeah. yeah, I've seen way too many people who actually succeeded <sighs> and then their lives collapsed. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, it's always a good question. Like, yeah. what actually makes you happy? Yeah, and maybe that's what Jim Carrey figured out in the end. Maybe. I can't just keep doing this mask character or mm -hmm. versions of him. Yeah. Even if, even if everybody thinks it's the most, like, creative thing in the world, mm -hmm. if it isn't that for you, it doesn't really work out. I th yeah, I also think Dave Chappelle, same thing, hmm. where he just walked away from his show. Right. And then everyone kind of got mad at him, but he was just like, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. And then I've, he, yeah. I've given you what I could. I won't give you less, but I would give you less if I kept going. Where, where are you right now, almost, in a way? Hmm? Like, where are, like, because you're trying to figure out how to, like, obviously, like, make yourself to ha start making content that's fun and interesting. Like, what's your process of, like, making that? <clears throat> like, making sure that you're checking in with yourself all the time. I'm still, it's, it's always a battle, right? Because yeah. you kind of, like, you can't only do things that you are, that you think are of, like, ultimate significance. Because yeah. you might not have that many ideas. <laughs> so, like... I definitely find that it, it's like it's a balance between okay, well this this is the actual idea I have now, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna work at it and get it done because yeah. this will you know like it will keep me afloat, but it'll mm -hmm. also like you can get a surprising amount of fulfillment out of a project like if you're really if you're really focusing on the craft and you like find something in it that you you can learn that you haven't done before yeah like. This past video that I did was not one, it wasn't the one that I was like, this is going to be huge and awe-inspiring. It was this little, like, sea shanty about the discovery of insulin. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, I knew it was going to be niche. And I also, like, I, I didn't feel, like, that rush of excitement about it. But also, it was, like, for one thing, the discovery of, like, this very old acapella style that kind of predates everything I'd worked on before yeah. was, like, really cool and interesting. And also... It was a good reminder of the, like, the personal nature of science and, like, what I'm actually doing this for. Mm -hmm. Because, like, through this video, I've actually gotten more responses than from a lot of other ones of people being like, this, this, like, really affected me personally, you know? Wow. Like, this was yeah. a discovery that saved my grandfather's life or my sister's life, right? Because, mm -hmm. it, it, like, the discovery of insulin, like, changed the game. Oh, it was, yeah. like, diabetes Milestone. was a death sentence and then suddenly it wasn't. Right? So, I don't know, I think there's things that you can, you can get out of any creative project if you really, if, if you really pay attention to it. That, they're, that, that, would, that would be really good for, I would love to see someone else try to make the same project I make. Yeah. Because I often get to the end and I can't imagine how it could possibly be different. Like every, every letter see, feels preordained because it was such a struggle to pull it out. Yeah. That to, to imagine pulling it out of anywhere else feels impossible, but it's not like it actually is. Mm -hmm. It could have, this could have been a different thing in a million different yeah. ways. We, everyone can pull different things and at different moments you're seeing things differently. It's always, always interesting um, also to listen to um, albums like before the, like the early cuts. Because mm. you hear the song and like you recognize it and it's still good, but then it's just different than the final cut. And it's just, who's to say what's right and what's wrong? Yeah. It was... Yeah, same with a movie, like a director's cut. And then the interesting thing there is, like, that's kind of liberating, too, because if you actually know that there's a bunch of different solutions to your mm -hmm. problem, the question is, what are you, like, then you actually have a freedom to say, to make some choices and yeah. to say what you mean to say, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, As to opposed to just hoping that you're saying something. And, yeah. yeah. And that's, I think when you get better as a creator, it, like, you also expand your, your range of viewing what's like what's possible and where the interesting solutions might lie. Yeah. So I was watching this this uh, this jazz kid named Jacob mm -hmm. Collier um, do do like an ex a harmony explanation video. Yeah. 
And the really interesting thing that he was saying, like he was like, all right, here's, here's this note. I can make this note work with every bass note. Here's mm -hmm. how I'm going to do it. And he, he like walked it up and he's like, yeah. look, it's this one, it's this one. Like, they all have kind of different characters. But like, now, that, now, that I, now that I've shown you that like, this, like, with, the, with the proper knowledge, this can work with absolutely any, like, any interval, which is kind of mm -hmm. any emotion, right? Yeah. Like, so this one thing can be given any color you want. Now you're free to, to ask, what am I, what do I want to say? You're not constrained by the technical aspects. You're not just trying to make sure that, that the notes are right, or if we're taking this to video, that the, you know, the cuts are on cue and all the sound is good. Yeah. It's like, now you have the freedom of, well, like, what do, you want to, what do you want to talk about? Like, yeah. what do you want to say? Yeah. So that's our show this week. We are produced and edited by me. Our theme song is by Ashmeta, and our logo is by Isabella Lee. Special thanks to our guest, Tim. Definitely check out his channel, Acapella Science. It is great for both getting a good song and getting some science in. And thanks to our sponsor, Ether Kombucha. We love you. Till next week, have a good one.